stepped into the doctor's office. Amen. And of course, my name is already Dr. Williams, so it'll be easier to kind of visualize. But you've entered the ER today, I'm changing my profession today just for the sake of my sermon. And I come to issue a diagnosis and write you a prescription. Amen. And since Aisha is qualified to write a prescription, I'm glad she's here because that's going to validate how I diagnose you. And I think that all of my medical people will be able to attest when I get done that I'm almost on track. Pretty close. Can we just talk today? Y'all ready? Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, the sixth verse. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask my reader to stand and she'll read it. For me. One hand full of rest and, and patience is better than two fists full of labor and chasing after the wind. Read again. One hand full of rest Stop. and patience. Stop. So I want you to, when she read it, I want y'all to listen to it. Stop at every phrase. One hand full of rest. One hand full of rest. Yes. This and a, patience. Yes. Is better than two fists full of labor. And chasing after the wind. Yes. One hand full of rest. Let the church say rest. Rest. And patience. And patience. Is. Is. Better than. Better than. Two fists. Two fists. Full of labor. Full of labor. Because if you got two fists full of labor, you're chasing after the wind. <laughs> what does that mean? That means that you're working more than you're resting. Yeah. You're chasing after something that's not there. Yeah, we go. It's gonna be real good. Yeah, it's gonna be real. See, I already said something. Y'all didn't even know it. Uh huh. So let's pray, cause I'm gonna have to pray for a demon that's gonna rise up in here today. Cause they gonna think I'm talking about him. This, this, no, no. I know we. Didn't, I'm talking about us. Yes. Amen. I had to make sure. Yeah. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. God, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory, God. Now, God, saturate the word. Let your word go forth with power. God, let it open up our minds now to receive all of you. Forgive us of all of our sins. God, I, 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 I submit myself as a vessel to you so that you are able to use me how you want to use me. And God, I declare and decree today, oh God, that your word make us think more about our lives. And God, I pray, God, that you're glorified in all that said in your son Jesus' name. Every heart said amen. 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 Uh, I thought about whether or not I was going to tell this story at the beginning or at the end. I got two stories to tell. I don't know if they testimonies or just stories, but what I will say to you is that when God started dealing with me about this message, he said this thing. He said, my people spend so much time chasing after stuff when our stuff should be chasing after us. Yeah. He said, we spend so much time chasing after stuff. What stuff? Houses and cars and better jobs and more money. We're chasing after stuff, better clothes. Huh? We want to look better, new weaves, new hairdos, better nail techs. We're chasing after stuff when our stuff really should be chasing after us. Because when you chase after stuff, you get exhausted quicker. Right, right. But when the stuff chase you down, you ain't have to work as hard for it. Right. Yeah. And so I, I kept asking the Lord, I said, what are you speaking to me? And, and, and I want you to visualize a couple of things. And I want you to hold up the two sheets of paper that you have in the air. And today we're going to analyze, hold them up separately. We're going to analyze the two sheets of paper. And the one sheet of paper has no lines, no margins. The other sheet of paper has lines with margins. Let the church say margin. Margin. One sheet of paper is marginless, and the other sheet of paper has margin. Hold up the sheet of paper that's marginless. Amen. Now hold up the sheet of paper that has margins. I want you to think about a thing as I'm teaching this particular topic today, and we're having a general conversation. I want you to know one thing. When you're in school, the school teacher teaches you, when you write on paper, you write in between the what? Lines. 
You right in between the lines. Let the church not say lines. Let the church say margin. margin. Let the church say margins. Amen. So the, the school teacher teaches us when we begin to write on paper, we write in between the what? Margin. The margins are there to provide limitations so that when you begin to write, your writing is not all over the paper. And God has begun to allow me to understand that many of us, our lifestyles are like the marginless paper. When we shouldn't be living lives like the, like the line paper with margin. Let the church say margin. margin. I want to talk about a couple of things today. As you're in the doctor's office, you've showed up today because you're looking for a diagnosis for being overwhelmed, overworked, underpaid. Not progressing as well. Not where you should be. Not where you want to be. You haven't met all your goals. You're kind of stressed out, but you don't want to admit it. You're in denial about a lot of stuff, and you don't want the doctor to tell you the truth about your diagnosis. But I come to tell you the truth today. And that truth is there's a new disease that has hit the house. And this disease is not a lupus. This is not the common flu. This is not SARS. This is not AIDS. This is none of these things. Yes, in the Old Testament, we had epidemics and plagues of locusts and flies and all kinds of things, and God killed the firstborn. But this is not a plague of the firstborn. This is not a plague of locusts. This is not a plague of flies. This is a plague of marginless living. Yeah. Marginless living. Marginless living. Let the church say marginless living. Marginless living. Watch this. Marginless living comes today from a condition of a modern day living. And modern day living devours margin. Let the church say margin. margin. Watch this. If you are homeless, we send you to a shelter. If you are penniless, we offer you food stamps. If you are breathless, we connect you to oxygen. But if you are marginless, we give you yet one more thing to do. Y'all ain't gonna see. Huh? 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 Because the world has a solution for everything that we throw at it. But the world doesn't have a solution for a busy life. When you have a busy life, the world only throws one more thing to do. Let the church say one more thing to do. And the one more thing to do leads to marginless living. And marginless living leads to an out-of-balance life. And an out-of-balance life leads to more pain, more issues, more diseases, opens your body up to more viruses and infections. And when you go to the doctor, your symptoms are not symptoms of something that you contracted, but it's a symptom of marginless living. Yeah, yeah, so I come to make you think today because what is marginless living? Marginless living is being 30 minutes late to the doctor's office because you were 20 minutes late getting out of the bank, because you were 10 minutes late dropping off the kids at school because the car ran out of gas two blocks from the gas station and you forgot your wallet at the house. Y'all are going to talk to me. Oh, I'm talking real good because this happened to me this week. I had to run out and take care of something, hopped in my car, and when I made it to the bottom of the hill, I realized I hadn't even had enough time to stop and get gas, and I only had one mile to empty. I had to stop, hop out of my car, go and borrow somebody else's car just to finish a task that threw me behind, and so I was late for an additional meeting, all because I got marginalized living. Yeah. Yeah, this same marginalized living allow me to accept an event, an activity of whom I went to participate in this week. And I, on this week, I went to the restroom and, and I took care of my business and took all of two minutes. And when I got done doing what I needed to do in the restroom, I washed my hands and I walked past, uh, I walked to the garbage can and I threw away the paper towel and I walked to a door and the door did not open. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying to myself, why am I locked? into a restroom. And so I began to knock on the door and say, help, does nobody, nobody hear me? I'm in the restroom, help anybody out there? And five minutes went by and I'm still in the restroom locked in. Seven minutes go by and I'm still in the restroom locked in. Ten minutes go by, I'm still in the restroom locked in. I call everybody in the sanctuary but their phone is on silence because they are at choir rehearsal. But I'm stuck in the restroom and so when I finally get somebody they answer the phone and say where you at I say I'm stuck in a restroom that opened when I walked in but when I go to walk out it would not open and they said okay I'm coming what restroom are you in I said I'm in the foyer 
Hallelujah. And they walk in the restroom and I look at them and say, where you come from? Yeah. And I step to the side and I say, there ain't no door right there, surely. Mm -hmm. Somebody going to catch it in a minute. Yeah. Surely there was not a door that I missed mm -hmm. because I was doing too much to pay attention to the door that I was supposed to exit out of. So I found myself standing at the mechanical room door in the restroom. <laughs> y'all don't, don't want to hear what I'm saying. So the pastor was stuck at the closet door, bearing on the door that no one would have never answered because that was not the door for me to exit. There was another door for me to exit, but I missed that door because I was in marginless living. Somebody going to catch it on the way. And a lot of us, we are missing doors that God has put before us all because we haven't taken time to put our life between the margin. So uh, I, I said, God, what are you saying? He said, when you are living a life in the margin, margin is having breath left at the top of the staircase. Margin is having money left at the end of the month. Margin is sanity left at the end of adolescence. Marginless is the baby crying and the phone ringing at the same time. Y'all want to hear what I'm saying? Margin is when your grandma, when the, the children's grandmother takes the baby out for the afternoon and you got some time just to chill. That's margin living. But marginless living is being carried. Watch this. This is what blew me away. Stand up. Hold your Bible. Walk. Marginless living says I'm carrying something, but I come up to somebody and I say, I need you to do something for me. I want you to carry this. You were already carrying something, but because I asked you to carry this and you don't have the ability to say no, you accept something that you should say no to because it's not his job to carry what belongs to me for me to carry and a lot of you are carrying things that belong to somebody else that you're not supposed to be carrying and you ain't adding weight and load to your own life and then you walk around bogged down, weighed down, overwhelmed, overworked, stressed out all because all of the load that you're carrying does not belong to you it should be dimming back out because you're living marginless Marginless living is when you're carrying five pounds and somebody asks you to carry 50 pounds and you decide to do it to save face because you don't want them to know that you can't carry 50 pounds. Y'all y'all looking. Now margin is when you, when you have a load to carry, but when you're living in margin, you have surrounded yourselves around friends that will take a load of the weight from you when they notice that you are carrying something that might be too heavy for you, but when you are living a marginless life, other people in your circle got just as much on their plate as you got, and can't nobody help nobody carry any load, and so you're stuck carrying not only your load, but their load, and somebody else's load, and you weighed out, and you stressed out, and now you got pain in your body, and you show up at the doctor's office, and you want the doctor to explain to you why you have pain in your body, and then they tell you you got a pinched nerve. Or a ruptured disc. But you don't have a ruptured disc or a pinched nerve. What you really have is a lifestyle of an epidemic called marginless living. I ain't, ain't going to get nobody to talk to me. Don't worry, we at real church today. And so I kept reading the book on margin. And watch this. Marginless living is not having time to finish the book you are reading on stress. But margin is having time to read it twice. Marginless is fatigue, but margin is energy. Marginless is in a hurry all the time, but margin is calm. Marginless is culture. Margin is counterculture. I said, what are you saying, God? God said, marginless is the disease of the new millennium, and margin is the cure. All right. I'll preach you real good. See, we, can we just have a talk today? You at the doctor's office. Amen. So what I need you to do, and this is what the Lord showed me. He said, I want you to take out the marginless paper. See, this is unusual, church. Take out marginless paper. 
And I want you to take the margin of this paper. And I want you to write down everything you normally do in a day. On the regular. Don't worry, I got time. This ain't your cousin church. And I didn't come to make you shout today. I come to make you think. Because Jesus said, I come to make sure you have life and have it more abundantly that you may live in good health and prosperity. But most of us can't live in health because our marginless living is killing us. And don't write small. You don't have no lines on the paper. So write like your life is. Write fast and in a hurry where you can barely read your writing because you got to use the next set of time for something else because you use excuses like this. There is not enough time in the day to do what I need to do when in actuality there is enough time in the day. You are just living a marginless lifestyle. Oh, yes, it's quiet right on through there. <laughs> we still right. Say, I get up, get ready for work. Watch this. I go to work. I work my, my job, seven to five. Huh? Work seven to five. Pick up the kids. Huh? Pick up the kids. Get them something to eat. Take them to practice. Huh? I work the seven to five. Get them something to eat from five to six. Taking them to practice from six to seven. Getting them from practice, making it home. They got bedtime curfew, so I got to bathe them. They want snack again, want something to drink. Bathe them, get them something ready, find them clothes. Now it's 10 o'clock. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't fine. It's 10 o'clock, and find them clothes. Now you're trying to get them in the bed, make them sit still, be quiet, lay down, cut off the TV. But I, I just want to watch it one more minute, cut off the TV, go to sleep. Now you yell them for the next 20 minutes, go to bed, and now you look up, it's 11 o'clock. Huh? Now you got to try to either try to take a bath and decide whether you're going to take it in the morning. And then the little time that you do have left, if you do have a spouse, you want to try to spend the next five minutes before you fall asleep talking to them. Because the 7 to 10 o'clock, you had no time. Because of the marginless lifestyle. And then you go to bed for the five or six hours that you have left and you get up and you do it all over again. But then many of us, what happens is this is the life that we live and we still allow people to pile more things onto the life that's already busy. Y'all don't want to hear, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Huh? And so when you already don't have enough time as it is, you allow folks to come into your life and say, can you do this for me? And you say, okay, I'm going to fit this in my schedule. Okay, I got to take the girls to practice, got to pick them up, I got to get them something to eat. Okay, I can do it. When can you do it? Y'all want to hear. So he said, keep writing. And now I want you to think about the stuff this past week that somebody asked you to do that you really didn't have to do. But you did it because you was being nice today with your friend. Write that down. On that margin list. Don't flip over. Write on the same side of the paper. Y'all tell the truth on the paper. Huh? Tell the truth. Because then I want to find on your paper where is prayer. And where is reading your Bible. And where is meditation. Because you don't have time to do it. You don't have time to talk to God. You don't have time to listen to God. You don't have time. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. And then you, you want the God that you don't have time for because you built a life around man's lifestyle and man's system and this marginless living that you want the same God you don't spend time with to bless you with a nice house, the nice car, and when man's system run out of you and man don't want to give you a promotion and man don't want to pay you what you're worth, man is killing your body, then you want God to build it back up again, y'all. I thought I was at church. Oh, yeah. I ain't going to get finished today. So he says, keep writing. All of the stuff that is on the marginless paper, keep adding. Write the times down that you're doing these things. <laughs> Write these times down. Huh? Some of you don't have time to cook dinner. No? Y'all ain't you listening to me, huh? Some of you don't even have time, time for yourself. 
Wait a minute. What is the time for yourself on that paper? Oh, I'm just... No time for yourself on the paper, but it's your life, but no time for yourself. Huh. Huh. Then we wonder why you got migraines and headaches and you got high blood pressure and diabetes and all of these things are running rapid and we call them generational curses. But the generational curse ain't the high blood pressure. It ain't ADHD. It ain't ADD. And I got the news for you today. The Lord spoke to me Saturday night. He said this new millennium, he said they're diagnosing a lot of children with ADHD and ADD. He said, but that ain't the true diagnosis. You showed up to the doctor's office today and I got a diagnosis. And that diagnosis is the parents don't have focus living so the children don't know how to focus. And so we're calling it ADHD and ADD because the parents
and tell them to keep it holy. And any time that they spend on this day should only be a time for me and them. Because I know that their Monday, their Sunday through Friday is going to be busy. And so I need to build an extra day in the week so that they don't have an excuse not to spend time with me. Oh, yeah. See? Because God knew that your schedule was going to be too busy Monday through Friday to read and to worship and to meditate and to pray. So he gave us an additional day just for that. Yeah. <laughs> Let the church say sad. So I kept looking. Come on, babe. Kept looking. Y'all still writing? Y'all can write and listen. Write on the margin paper. If you got a sentence that have gone beyond the margin, I need you to scratch that off. Uh, scratch it because if it went beyond the line, you didn't obey while the margins are there. You went. Hey, you can't go past the margin. See that? She, she ain't going to be able to get home because if you want her to get home, then you got to scratch something else off the list so you can fit that in the margin. Y'all, 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 because, y'all, because I'm going somewhere with this and I want you to see something. And God said that our lives are like this balloon. Yeah. We start off as children. We start off as children and we're born into families. And it's a situation we don't ask for below the balloon. And this air represents the life that we have to live that we didn't ask for as adolescents. And if you make it through adolescence, you've done well. But I want y'all to catch something. Even a child has a busy schedule. We sign them up for ballet below. Gymnastics, softball, baseball. We want them to be real around you know. Huh? They got to go to choir rehearsal, Easter practice, Sunday school. And what we realize is we start giving our children as busy a life as we have. But I want y'all to see something. Watch how important and how smart God is. As a young child, he gave somebody enough wisdom to implement what God tried to implement at the creation. And what do we do when we raise little children with their one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old, and even some five-year-old? When they're working all day, in the middle of the day, what do we do at the daycare or in pre-K? We make them take a nap. Let some air out. So when they rest, that's what happens. Y'all can catch this on the way home. And so, all while they're living their busy life, we make the child take a nap. So we make them rest. But once they reach a certain age, we take the nap out of the schedule. Now watch this. I want y'all to. Some of y'all adults, if you don't get a nap, you are irritable. Yeah. You are moody. You don't want to be bothered. You are more frustrated. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. You are more frustrated. Y'all, I can't give no amen right there. When you are lacking rest, you get smart quicker. You have a foul mouth. Don't nobody want to be. Y'all don't want to hear like I wish I could find some. Huh? You know how you are when you are tired and you are worn out. Huh? You just want to get in your bed. You want the kid. You leave me alone. I ain't in the mood. Don't touch me. Huh? I ain't in the mood for playing. Why are you not in the mood for playing? Because you are. Y'all don't want to. Because what was good for you, we have taken it out of our lives just like we take God. I want you to blow because now you're beyond kindergarten and they are still playing sports, blow. And they're involved in all kinds of stuff that their parents put them in. Uh, keep blowing. They get to high school, they play three sports, they're cheerleader all year, honor society, SGA, volunteer service. Then they got to decide whether they're going to go to college or get a career because they don't want to disappoint the uh, parents. So even the decision on what you're going to do is a little stressful, so blow. 
And because we want them to be successful and they're stressed out about the decisions that they have to make so that they don't disappoint nobody, they decide most of the time originally to do something that they really don't want to do, below. I wish I could find some adults that can agree with me right there. And so the first things that we initially do are not the first things that we want to do ourselves. You know what I'm talking about. Some of us wanted to be movie stars, all kind of stuff, and then the parents talk them out of it. You know, when you raise your children, you ask them what they want to be. I want to be a firefighter. No, you don't. <laughs> Why? Because in our minds, firefighters are not success stories. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all ain't with me right there. Uh, policemen are not success stories. You know, everybody now wants their child to be a doctor and a lawyer, you know, huh? Uh, an engineer, a scientist, or something. But don't realize that even the student loan debt of $210,000 is short for. And so we will send them to school and make them be a doctor. No one, they didn't get a scholarship. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. And then we will teach them to get all these student loans and they got to pay them back. And they are not $200 a month. They are not $400 a month. And you're not going to help them pay it when they get out, but you'll help them get them by making them do something that they don't really. All right, man. Oh, okay. We at the doctor's office, they came in for overworked, overwhelmed, stressed out. I mean, you came in for the migraine today. You came in for that ache in your side that you can't explain why it's there. You know, you at the doctor's office, keep blowing. Keep blowing. So now you are an adult and you have gotten a degree, but you didn't get a job in the field of your degree. And the job that you thought you were going to get, you didn't get, so you had to settle for another job. When in actuality, if you hadn't just done what you wanted to do from the beginning, you'll be a lot less stressed out. You know, right? Wait, 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 so, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, uh-huh, and so, now watch this, so then one day, after all this stress, because now, you remember, now ain't in her system, so we taking the Sabbath out, and we taking God out, and we filled it with man's system, and now you looking like this, and you decide one day you wanted a boyfriend, and one day you wanted a girlfriend, and then you wanted to get married, and then realize that marriage, <laughs> is not a stress reliever. Y'all can't get no amen. I'm, I'm looking for the real church. I'm talking better than what you want to amen to right there. I, I can't get no Because now, you, now you're not independent no more. Now you got to not only put up with your own self. You got to put up with somebody else's self. And watch this. Not only do you not understand fully your own self, you really don't understand the other self. Because the two are supposed to become one. And I can't understand how two of us become one when I don't even know about my let alone trying to understand somebody else's blow the blow. I'm, I'm talking about marginal city. So you decide to get married. Yeah. And the crazy thought when y'all was married with no kids, we decided we was going to have some kids. What was that? Because we didn't evaluate this was our life. Huh? Y'all want to hear then we've been going to church 33 years and never learned how to let the air out. But instead, we continue to pile stuff on. Watch this. So you had kids. Now watch this. This is still your life, but you had kids. So now that you had kids, you thought you was busy. Now not only do you have to go to work, you have to build into your schedule how to take care of them. So how you gonna get them to school block? How you gonna pick them up from school? How you gonna get them to daycare? How they gonna get their homework done? How you gonna get them to softball practice? And what if you have to work over late? Now you got to you got to bother somebody else. You don't wanna hear what I'm saying? Now I got to ask you to do something for me because I'm living marginless. And now I'm adding to your load and you being nice to me. Y'all. Right, right. So now I have children. And the more she continues to add to her life, what's eventually going to happen to the balloon? The balloon. And that's how most of you all have been feeling even here lately. Your life is filled with so much stuff. You're overwhelmed, but you're in denial. You're overworked, but you're in denial. You are stressed out, but you're in denial. And you don't realize what you're really going through. And then a lot of you, you're going to chiropractors and therapists. And some of you got mental health specialists.
that you don't want nobody to know nothing about and you're sleeping in on a Saturday morning in another city because you don't want nobody to know that you have to sit down in a chair in order to get a stressful day. I don't want to hear what I'm saying. Uh, and a lot of us, we don't have mental health counselors, but some of us need them because if we tell the truth about what we're actually going through, all of us can sit down and take a deep breath. I didn't do the straight away from because what we don't understand is God created the day called Sabbath for rest, not just because of rest, but because He wanted you to have some time to spend with Him because He knew you were going to get busy. Watch this. So when Rebecca decides to spend time with God, and she decides to live a margin lifestyle. She got all that stuff on her. And eventually she's on the bus. But when she starts spending time with God, let that out. Just a little bit at a time. So she prays in the morning, 15 minutes. She prays at lunch, 15 minutes. She goes home. She reads her Bible and study and meditates for about an hour. Let the air out. Uh-huh. And she does this Monday through Wednesday. Thursday, she gets too busy. Get the air out. Keep going. She shows up at church. She takes notes. Shows up for Bible study. She takes notes. Keep letting the air out. And the more time she spends with God, because he built that time in the day where she's not taking a full day, she's decided to take minutes from other days when God gave us a full day. But when she's decided, she's decided to repurpose her time. And so she's given time and days so that she can live a balanced life. And the reason why your body is out of alignment and you need a chiropractor is not because your body is just jacked up, but it's because you're living marginless. So the more time she's filled with God, the more she can handle and the more she can take on. So now when somebody needs her to do something, she can add it to her life. Because she spent the necessary time that she's needed to spend with God. And so now, when my BFF has a problem and I got my own problems, I still can pray for them. And I still can intercede on their behalf. Why? Because I'm not overloaded and stressed out because of my own life. What I need you to do is, we're married and your husband is stressed. But you've been spending time with God like you should, and you're at this stage. But I'm stressed, and I need you to intercede for me. So blow <coughs> as you intercede. I want y'all to catch this. Now, as she intercedes for me, She intercedes for me and we're spouses. This is what's happening for me because now someone is spending time on my behalf for me and the time I should be spending for myself, I'm able to just kick my legs up just for a moment and relax. Now watch this. So I say to God, oh but now she's big so now I have to give back to her what she gave to me. All right. But most of you didn't take enough time to listen to God to marry the right person. And so when you do that, y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. While your spouse is steady doing this because you're interceding, you have nobody returning. And so y'all don't want to hear me. I just lost the whole church right there. All right. So the Lord speaks to me and he says to me, he says, there is a solution to the problem. Marissa, put it up. You come to the doctor's office today, and I have a diagnosis for you. Your symptom, watch this, is pain. And a lot of you will say, I don't have pain. But he spoke to me, and he told me, he said this, Tan. He said, a lot of us, our pain is progress. God. Y'all don't catch this. This is a deep revelation. The pain is progress. What is progress? Progress is always wanting something better. Progress is always wanting to see something getting better. 
Progress is wanting a little bit more money than you had last year. Progress is wanting to have a little bit finer things than you did last year. I want to see progress, but we don't realize that progress is bringing pain because when you are trying to get progress, you're living marginless. And when you live marginless, your life is out of control. And when your life is out of control, you don't have time for God. And then you're stressed out and then you want God to fix it. Watch this. So I want y'all to catch this on the way home. God is not saying to quit your job so you can spend time with him. But what he is saying is this. You should be so caught up in progress that you miss God. All right. Catch this. Catch this. Catch this. Because he said, Didi, this blew me away. He said to me, he said, you are supposed to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else shall, watch this, be added unto who? You. Watch this. So he told me to tell y'all, y'all working too hard. He said, prophesy to my people to tell them they're working too hard. He said, how do I know they're working too hard? Because they're working too much for their own selves, and I'm supposed to be working for them. Oh, I can't get right. my hands like that. Huh? He said, because if they'll sit down and let me work for them, he said, they won't have to work so much. And some of you won't have to have two jobs. And some of you won't have to work long hours. If you'll just let me work for you, and you work a little bit less, and you'll seek me first, the kingdom of God, then I'll give you what you're looking for. Oh, I can't get the right man right there. And so the Lord said to me, if you'll spend more time listening to God so that God can give you the strategy and the plan, you'll do a lot less working. So he says, he said, tell my people, Bree. He said, tell them, if they'll sit down and listen to me long enough, I'll tell them the right job in the right city. I'll tell them the right house and the right car. I'll tell them the right spouse. I'll tell them when it's the right time to have kids. I'll tell them all of these things. He said, why is this important? He said, it's important because the strength that you got now in your life, it wouldn't be there if you were living according to my time schedule. Right. 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 We don't like the real, it's the real church right here. So he says, if we'll spend more time listening, you'll be blessed more. Because God will tell you when to move. He'll tell you when to hold them and when to fold them. But yet we're taking on more responsibility and more obligations because we don't want to tell people no. And we, and a lot of it is not telling people no. Thank you, Holy Ghost. A lot of it is our chasing after materialistic stuff. And so because we're chasing after materialistic stuff, then we make our lives too busy than what we can handle. And then we'll say to God, you don't put more on us than we can bear. But the question is, who put it on you? The stuff that's on you. <laughs> I better go back this way. And as I close this topic and pick up next week, I want y'all to think about a couple of things. He says, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse number 6. Read it, reader. One handful of rest and patience is better than two fists full of labor and chasing after the wind. Read it again. One handful of rest and patience is better than two fists full of labor and and chasing after the wind. Put my arm um, there in the doctor's office. Come here, doctor. You came to the doctor's office. We have Dr. Scott. So to me, Scott Bell. You came in and you say, Doc, she said, What the problem? Doc, I've been having these pains in my knee. And I just don't know what's going on. And you want the doctor to sit there and listen to all of your symptoms. <laughs> and after they listen to all your symptoms, the doctor's job is to diagnose the problem. So the problem was pain. Put it back up, Arissa. Put my slide back up. The diagnosis 
It's not pinched nerve. It's not your L4, your L9 out of whack. It ain't that you're missing cartilage in your knee. The fact of the matter is, your knees have been overworking. And you are overloaded with stuff that shouldn't be on your plate. Watch this. So today the doctors don't write all y'all prescriptions. And the prescription is simply going to read margin. So the doctor wants you to take the marginless paper. And the doctor wants you to ball the marginless paper up. And as of today, the Lord wants you to make a careful decision. And that careful decision is, we're going to stop running our lives doing a whole bunch of good stuff that's not God stuff. Amen. A whole bunch of good stuff, but it's not God stuff. And God said it's beating down our bodies. It's killing our mental stability. And it's making us miss doors of opportunity that we're just walking past, like I did in the restroom. I'm going to help you right there. And God said you're looking to be blessed. And you want doors of opportunity. And you're looking for promotion. And God said, I have placed them there. But you are missing them because you are overloaded. And your overloadedness is leading to distractions. And the reason why you can't focus on him long enough is because you are too busy. So, Doc, give me a sheet of paper. He says, the key to change, watch this, this is prophetic. The key to change some of you all's current health and some of you all's future health. Notice I did say future because some of you are going down the same path that some people have already made it to. And the overloaded lifestyle is going to lead to complications in your health system. Am I right, doctor? Huh? Because when you go to the doctor and you have a migraine and it's in a certain location in your head, one of the first things they ask you is what? What you do for a living? And as soon as I tell them I'm a school teacher and a pastor, they say, oh, I know what the problem is. You what? You stressed out. So the root cause of your migraine ain't that you got an issue. You got an issue, but it ain't that type of issue. It's marginless living. Some of you have been having headaches. Some of you have been dealing with complications in your body. You have yet to go to the doctor because, now listen, he prophesied this to me. You have yet to go because, one, you're going to ignore it until it gets worse enough. And so, so yeah. yeah. And some of you, you just push it off to the side because you just want to ignore the fact that it's there. But God allowed me an insight today. He told me to tell you all, it will go away if you change your lifestyle. Amen. So today the doctor's going to write a prescription for margin living. And we're going to throw away marginless living. And I'm going to pick up next week with the pain in the margin. <laughs> this week, you have a challenge. You already got a busy schedule. I just gave you mine. It's busy, doc. And I don't really need no medication because watch this. Every medication, most of the time, has a side effect. And the solution to most problems now only bring more problems. But how about God gave me a solution that won't bring you any more problems? Why? Because the problems that some of you all have belong to somebody else. Oh, my God. 